it's on the front pages of, of lots of the newspapers, this proposed new law that dog thieves could face up to seven years in prison in future. And these are new government plans. Yeah, with the rise of the number of animals being stolen and resold during the pandemic, ministers want to make pet abduction a criminal offence to recognise the emotional distress caused to owners and their pets. The Justice Secretary, Robert Buckland, joins us now this morning. Uh, so what we have learned about you, uh, Mr Buckland, that you have a cat I landing... I am I'm afraid. I can't hear you in the studio. OK, we we'll can't keep talking. Can you hear us now? Any, any better? Can you hear what I'm saying now to you, Mr Buckland? Still struggling with the sound? Uh, we're going to have to work that out, I okay. think. They're, they're just going to twiddle some buttons. While we try Either and that turn or on the he, he was confused by... But we've got the, the cat wrong and it's not Mrs Landingham after all. Well, Mrs Landingham... this is what we've learned about him. ..is his cat. Mrs Landingham famously was the secretary for President Bartlett in the West Wing, Martin Sheen's... Uh, secretary. Uh, very excited to know that he is a cat lover. A cat lover. It's interesting to know. We've been learning surprising people are ABBA fans. Uh, maybe Robert Buckland is too, but there he is with Mrs L, he calls her for short. OK, and let's... And hopefully uh... Mr Buckland uh, can hear us yes. now. We've just been looking at yes. pictures of you cuddling Mrs L. Uh, there's lots of things. We talk to you all the time, don't we? But there's lots of things about politicians <laughs> which don't crop up in our chat. And the fact that you're a passionate pet owner isn't one of them before, but you presumably are backing these new proposals. Yes, Kate, look, I'm, I'm delighted to be able to come on the show. Uh, Mrs L has just been wandering through the garden as I look uh, beyond the camera here. She's uh, happy in her home. She was a cat protection cat. And this is the point. 51% of us are pet owners here in the UK. And can you imagine the sense of loss and trauma, uh, not just to the owners, but to the pets themselves, that occurs when they are taken, uh, stolen, abducted, as the phrase uh, used in the report suggests. Uh, and that's why I think this report is really timely. Pet abduction, I think, is an offence that we should put onto the statute book. And more than that, doing more work to help detect and prevent this crime from occurring in the first place. That's very much the thrust of this welcome report today. What will be the sentences and the sort of maximum sentence someone might face if they were caught stealing a pet? Well, I'm going to be working now with officials on the detail of that, but I think there's a really interesting read across to offences of animal cruelty. The government has just increased the maximum penalty for that to five years of imprisonment. And I think that's uh, a very good uh, guide, if you like, to help me make sure that we get the law in the right place, that we give the courts the fullest possible discretion to deal with these cases, and that the police are supported in improving the way they detect crimes, uh, so that we, we as owners have maximum confidence that if something appalling like this happens, then action will be taken. And will more support be given to the police in order to follow up some of these? Because mm -hmm. anecdotally, we hear people report of pet thefts in the past and the police don't have the time or the resource to be able to go and follow that up. Uh, is that resource going to be put into the police so they can support undoubtedly the number of people who are going to be very keen to find and prosecute mm -hmm. people that are stealing these pets? Well, yes, indeed, as we increase the number of police officers across the country, that will help. But also, the report quite rightly talks about joining up the dots here, improving the collection of data so we understand the problem better, and also highlighting how uh, best practice can, you know, in terms of detecting these crimes and promoting good investigations, can be spread so that people have confidence that uh, they will be taken seriously when complaints are made. And just improving data, you know, the, the microchipping system, we all know about microchipping, but it's a bit fragmented. There's not enough information on it. More needs to be done to improve that as well so that we can help stamp out some of the appalling abuses that we see, which cause huge suffering and misery to owners and indeed to the animals themselves. Uh, a passionate pet owner though you are and welcome, I think, for many, many people have been caused to stress mm. by abductions of their pets, uh, these moves will be. We, we can't and shouldn't talk to you this morning without dealing with other matters in the news. And uh, I wonder of your involvement with the situation in Afghanistan. It, it is terrifying and we've had people in Afghanistan having to talk to us anonymously because they're so fearful for their lives. Uh, people who've worked with British forces, people who've worked with the British Embassy that are still there, that are trapped and don't know when that knock on the door is coming. What can we do, what can you do legally as Justice Secretary to get people out, indeed, the judges? 
that are there that can't mm -hmm. get out, that work, work with Britain. What can you do for that? Well, I've been working now for several weeks with uh, senior judges here in the UK and indeed our own legal sector in helping to uh, identify and create links with as many judges as possible. Nine women judges are now out and safe here in the UK. We made it clear from the get-go that uh, people in that category will be uh, included in our resettlement scheme. Uh, and indeed, daily the work is going on. I'm getting emails from uh, judges in Afghanistan. I'm speaking to senior lawyers here in the UK. Only last night, Kate, I was on the phone to a very senior lawyer talking about potential ways out for more judges. And I am, my department are working closely with the Foreign Office to identify, uh, to collate all that information, to get that information together, and then to help identify safe uh, routes of passage out of Mr. the Buckland, country. We always I know, but the problem is, Mr Buckland, is that they're living second by second. That's how, I mean, we know that things like that take time. It makes you wonder if you shouldn't have been involved in looking at that before, or maybe you were. Well, Kate, um, uh, uh, when the crisis uh, developed, I, I was contacted and indeed uh, I've been giving anxious thought to vulnerable people like the judges. Uh, and that's why we moved at pace. I was very proactive in talking to our sector here in the UK. Uh, I picked up the phone and just got my got stuck into it because I, I felt like you that second by second we couldn't afford to lose time. Uh, we, we've had some achievement, but a lot more to be done. And I will carry on uh, just getting started stuck in and doing everything I can to make uh, that uh, process as smooth and as safe as possible for these very vulnerable yeah. people. But well, speed is of the essence, as, as undoubtedly you know. We need to get your thoughts as well and comments on what we saw last night in Hungary, the England team in action in the World Cup qualifier. They were racially baited and abused on the night. What will the government be doing to try and address this? It's something that unfortunately just isn't going away, is it? No, and you know, for sixty, I think about sixty thousand uh, Hungarian uh, uh, fans in the in the stadium. You know, uh, I'm sure, uh, as Harry Redknapp was saying, it's probably a minority, but it was an appalling uh, uh, and shocking incident. And I think we're doing a huge amount here in the UK to stamp out racism in sport. And there's been a long uh, and well-regarded campaign in football, in particular. I think we've just got to get that message out more strongly internationally that look all of us have a responsibility across the world and the international football governing bodies i know take uh, action against particular uh, countries that um, you know fall foul and, and cross that line uh, that clearly uh, should be done in this case uh, and, and i think all of us you know uh, leaders in society all of us need to call this out uh, and say look there's no space for this behaviour, uh, either uh, uh, on the pitch, off the pitch, or anywhere, frankly, in a civilised society. OK, Robert Buckland, Justice Secretary, thanks for joining us this morning.